So this, this kind of reminds me of some of the vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity studies, VILPA, as you have uh, called it, um, that you've been a part of. Um, I, so this is this is the, are those studies also considered exercise snacks or no? So you're right. Vig, uh, Vilpa is uh, vigorous intermittent lifestyle physical activity uh, and very much led by my colleague Professor Emmanuel Stamatakis out of the University of Sydney. So I've been uh, fortunate to be part of a really an international group that is that is looking at Vilpa in 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 various ways. But to be clear, we're talking. Um, not structured exercise. So you could think of VILPA in, in some ways as the non-exercise equivalent <laughs> of an exercise snack. And so we're talking activities of daily living that you would be doing anyway. And so I'll very, give you a very specific example. So to get to the recording studio today, I left my hotel. I, I had to get here, right? Somehow I had to get here. I took a ride sharing service for, for most of it, but leaving my hotel room I had a choice of taking the stairs or taking the elevator. I could have taken the stairs there. Or to get to my rideshare service uh, to walk a block, I could have walked at a leisurely pace or I could have picked up the pace, right? And said, I'm, I'm gonna engage in a vigorous manner here. Arrive at the location. Again, it's another minute to get from the rideshare service to the front door. I could do that in a vigorous pace or at a pedestrian pace. Or I could carry my backpack, right? and engage in that. And so the question there with VILPA is in these activities of daily living that are already part of our lives, if you embed vigorous effort in those, uh, you know, another classic example would be you take a five hour flight, you get off the plane, you have the choice, the escalator's there or you have the stairs. <laughs> you know, many people are taking the escalator, but you got some heavy backpacks, you could vigorously climb up the stairs for 30 seconds to a minute, that would be a dose of VILPA right there. And so again, you got to move from one level to the other. That's not planned and structured exercise. That's just uh, activities of daily living. And the question that's being asked in that research is, if people choose to do that in a vigorous manner, um, is that meaningful? And there's, there's some evidence for that, including a, a large uh, study that was published in, in December that was um, it mined the UK biobank data. And, and so what that allowed uh, the investigators to do was look at over 25,000 individuals who engaged in VILPA-like efforts. They wore accelerometers to try and capture this. And they were followed over almost seven years. And the outcomes uh, included all-cause mortality, cardiovascular disease mortality, cancer mortality. And that work showed or revealed um, that people who engaged in even three to four minutes total a day of VILPA-like activity um, had substantial reductions in all-cause mortality risks. We're talking 25, 30%. So that would suggest that even brief, non-exercise, vigorous intermittent physical activity can move the needle in terms of health out outcomes. And of course, we would suspect that maybe it has to do with some of these cardiovascular or metabolic changes uh, that we know are associated with health. So that's not cause and effect evidence. It's you know, observational evidence over time, but it was very uh, robustly done the way the work was, uh, was conducted. It's quite compelling, I think. I, I agree because after you shared those studies with me, I read them. And um, I think even on the higher end, so you mentioned kind of the conservative, you know, th three to four um, minutes a day when they were getting up to like more like nine I mean, you're talking, it was like 50% reduction in cardiovascular rate mortality, 40% reduction in cancer-related mortality. I mean, that's really um, incredible that these people are just doing this, you know, choosing to do these short bursts of, you know, vigorous intensity exercise and then having substantial benefits on, you know, on long, you know, longevity and health span, basically. Um, the other, if I can add, the other key thing from that study, I think, is that all of these people were self-identified non-exercisers. And so the point is, there even people who self-identify as non-exercisers seemingly are still engaging in vigorous activity through the day. Now, part of that might be their, their physical capacity is quite low. And so what it takes to get them into a vigorous intensity range is, is not very uh, much. Uh, and actually, as part of that study, it was repeated in individuals who also identified as exercisers and the same 
uh, phenomenon were, were apparent. So even in exercisers, engaging in VILPA-like activity was still uh, protective. So uh, again, lots of work to follow up on, you know, what actually counts as a VILPA bout, uh, you know, will people do this? Uh, you know, but you can imagine, uh, again, getting back to this idea of prompts, you know, building in VILPA-like activities in a smartwatch or uh, an app on a phone and encouraging you to accumulate three or four or five or 10 minutes of VILPA a day. But, you know, three or four minutes of VILPA is, you know, um, about 30 minutes of vigorous activity a week and large reductions wow. in risk. Yeah. And that is very doable. That is very, I mean, to say you can't do 30 minutes a week is, I mean, you're really just saying, I don't want to be healthy. <laughs> um, and, you know, the other, it's interesting, I don't want to go on too much of a tangent here, but like, you know, how, how, you wonder how much also of this, um, of the of these VILPA studies and these even exercise snacks has to do with just not being sedentary also, because that's like an independent risk factor for, I mean, independent of exercise, right? So like I sit at my, I, I don't consider myself a sedentary person because I engage in physical activity almost every day, pretty much. Seven days, I'm doing something. I'm either doing my Peloton and hit workout, I'm doing resistance training. Um, but I also sit at my desk for a good five hours. I'm sitting there, sitting. And that is when I am sedentary. So I'm actually trying now to incorporate uh, VILPA st stuff, I guess, you know, in, I guess it's more structured. So when it would be more of an exercise snack in that case. But um, I'm doing, you know, the, the the burpees or the high knees or something where, I mean, and believe me, like one minute of that, I'm like, this is the longest minute of my life, you know? I mean, it's like hard. So I, I, I can empathize in that I, I'm very similar. I'm a committed exerciser. Pretty much I do something every day, but you know, as a university professor, you sit at a computer a lot. Uh, and so trying to build them into my day as, uh, as, as well. Um, but yeah, I think the key there is, the, it, you're right. It, there may be a double benefit, if you will. Uh, you know, all of us should be meeting physical activity guidelines, of course, you know, add these in, sprinkle them in, but there may be a double benefit to a VILPA-like approach or an exercise snack approach in that it simultaneously breaks up prolonged periods of sedentary uh, behavior. Because I, you know, I'm sure like you, I don't like to see that evidence and read those studies that suggest even if you're a committed exerciser, prolonged sedentary is increasing your risk. <laughs> Right. Uh, you know, we like to think of exercise as this panacea, and it's it's not. It's not a vaccine against uh, ill health outcomes. Uh, and reducing sedentary behavior is uh, is really important as well, as is proper sleep.